Hello, Easy Robot. This is Jay Storm One or Josh Starns. Um, I just wanted to uh, get everyone to take a look at the newest gearbox uh, that I put together using the Servo City blank and a couple of parts also from Servo City, a three-inch arm. Um, I know it looks a lot bigger, but that's actually just only three inches from here to here, uh, and uh, looks like about a two-inch cog in a pinion. Uh, the pinions are pre-made by Actobotics or brass, and these are aluminum, aircraft aluminum, CNC machined. Um, even though my fingers are pretty close to this, seriously, don't get your fingers caught in this. Because it's so strong that I, I can grab this, and I'm not even going to bother showing you, there's no point, but I can grab this and, and turn it, and I cannot physically stop it. When I did the math, um, at 7.4 volts, based off of high-tech specs, they say that it gets 416 ounces um, at an inch, okay, ounce inches. However, the different the distance between this pinion to uh, the rotating area uh, is less than an inch. So it's actually getting a little bit more torque transferred from the center here to the rotating edge, uh, and that's giving some leverage. So it's a little bit more, okay. Um, but let's just assume it, it was an inch from this point to the rotating edge. Let's say it was that long, okay? That's 416 ounces at an inch. Um, then it's multiplied by seven times because there's seven times more teeth than there are on the pinion. Um, now, I uh, was using a calculator earlier, I believe it was like 2,900. I'm just, you know, rounding up. Uh, and then you divide that by uh, 16, so 16 ounces in a pound and then divide that by three, which is the maximum length on the last hole here on this arm, and uh, that gave us 60 pounds of torque. Uh, that's a lot, right? And that's all the way out here. So over here uh, in this area, uh, it's quite a bit more. I think it's uh, somewhere between 120 and 140. Again, I'm not, I'm not bothering you know, getting the exact numbers. It doesn't matter. But I'm just pointing out, it, it is, there's a lot of uh, pressure going on here. So if you got your finger stuck right here, uh, it's gonna be pretty bad. I want to have to create a cover for this because I don't want an animal or a person or myself making a video and sticking my finger on either side of it and accident accidentally moving. Because if it does, it will pinch your finger right off. It, it's I already had like daydream uh, horror thoughts, you know, final destination for my finger kind of things going on earlier today. Anyway, uh, wasting some time. Sorry about that. I'm going to go ahead and show you how quick this is, and it's, it's pretty surprising. I was telling you about how, how much torque it had. I was worried that I would probably need to put two of these together side by side in what's called tandem formation uh, in, in a push-push, which means they're both going the same way. Uh, one turns, the other one turns, same time. And they would have a Y-splitter, and the Y-splitter can... You can adjust the trim on it so to make sure they absolutely move at the same time. It's apart from Pewter, but it's not very expensive. Uh, we can also do it in the Easy Builder, but if you ever unplug them and plug them back in, they'll be wrong, or if you forget the settings, things like that. So sometimes some mechanical balance is, is nice to have. Uh, in this particular situation here, it's just one rod, uh, and this will have another rod, which I don't know where it is right now. I'm just going to use this hammer, which will go like this, okay? And it'll hook through with a screw and a bolt and go this way, and then it'll have that other rod that connects to the shaft. What I've learned is is that uh, there's so much torque in this, and, and the farther away from the center I get, it, uh, you know, it loses some torque. I mean, it's still 60 pounds up here, but uh, at right here, we should be at around 74 or something like that, I think. Uh, and then as we get closer to just uh, an inch from the center rod, then um, it's even better. I think it's uh, not exactly an inch, it was like 120. So the point is, is the closer I can get that point to where the shaft is moving to the center mass, the more torque I want to have. All I need to do is just make sure the travel, okay, for this is enough to be able to make it go lock to lock before uh, it stops, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and show you how fast this moves real quick. So the, the farthest uh, point I can possibly guess that this would uh, go is gonna be about 60 degrees. Uh, you can see the 60 degree mark here, so you can kinda see, uh, line that up. And I'm gonna go ahead and move it real quick. So that's 
is approximately 60 degrees. I'm going to bring it center. Oop, I thought I'd bring it center. Sorry, this little, little guy's a little sensitive. Okay, 60 degrees. Center. 50 degrees. Center. 50 degrees. Center. So it's not it's not really that slow. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and just flutter it back and forth to kind of show you how fast it is. Okay. And uh, I'm probably going to show you here in just a second with the outside to show you how much travel this actually needs. And then I'll tell me which one of these holes I can probably use to be able to cheat. Again, like I said, the more torque, the farther I get down on this, the more torque I get. I'm really trying to avoid having to use two boxes with a tandem because it's, it's going to be more expense. I um, kind of messed up the motor on one of these because I was trying to pop the um, PCB off. It was soldered directly to the motor and it wasn't wires. Normally they're wires. Some of the high techs that were soldered. Uh, and I popped the leads right out of the back of the motor. So it's possible maybe I can repair that. Uh, I thought about maybe just reassembling it and sending the high tech and let them deal with it because they, they do repair servos. So um, I, I didn't actually do anything else to the servo, so I can just pretend, hey, I, you know, this happened. <laughs> uh, can you please help me in fixing it? I'll gladly pay them whatever, you know, they require or whatever for another motor. But it'd be that nice not to have to spend another $90 on one of these servos. But uh, if you're going to do tandem, you always want to do another servo just like it. The um, reason why is because the characteristics of like flutter when little things happen like this, uh, which has to do with your resolutions, your response time, which is uh, measured in US, uh, things like that. If they're a little off, then just for like that split second, they're going to fight each other. One of the things that is kind of cool that's also kind of bugs me at the same time is there's a little bit of play in this. It's about one degree. But you can see that little play right there. If you do a tandem setup, that little bit of play is actually beneficial because um, that little play allows for a difference in the uh, uh, difference between two servos. So as long as they have most of the specs the same, they're close enough together, then that you know a little small amount of play should allow them not to fight against each other when they're doing a a pull pull or a push 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 configuration, which means they're both moving together. So, uh, just, you know, again, showing you, pretty fast, it's not bad, it's a lot faster than I thought it was going to be, seriously, and it's not got nearly as much juice as it could. Now what I'm going to do is move it outside real quick, I'm going to stop this video, move it outside, and sit it on top of the gear thing and see exactly how far it really needs to move, and then I have a better idea of how fast this will turn.